All right, guys, so this edition of Cuckoo for Cocoa Puff World, we have to go down to Mississippi. Mississippi, right? Again, um, surprising story here, okay? Uh, but, hey, maybe not <laughs> to a certain extent in regards to the actual outcome. But uh, it involves a high school girl, okay, a.k.a. a biological male, by the name of LB, who was told by Harrison Central High School officials that... This person, okay, this biological male who identifies as a girl, uh, had to adhere to boys' dress code in order to graduate. So this biological male who is trying to live life as a girl was told by school officials that, hey, hey, you can't wear a dress. You can't actually dress like a girl. You have to adhere to the boys' dress code because we go by biology, right? Biology matters around these parts, right? Uh, and you have to wear pants, socks, and shoes like a boy, right? This is what they allegedly told the trans student. Uh, the trans student got upset and said, no, okay, uh, I'm not going to do that. And the trans student decided to sue. A judge uh, supported the school uh, in their decision not to allow the trans student to walk. And the trans student ended up not walking for graduation. So I want to talk about this story. But I want to go ahead and play a news clip so you guys can get a better understanding of what's going on here, and then we will get into it. Take a look. Amid graduation season, so many students are celebrating their 12 years of academic achievements and hard work coming to a close. But for some Harrison Central High students, this weekend ceremony only represents heartbreak. It was just two weeks ago when 17-year-old LB was called into her principal's office for what she refers to as an unexpected warning. She was told as a transgender student and biological male, she must adhere to the boys' dress code for graduation. According to school policy, her only requirement left to graduate was to wear a white button-down shirt, a tie, and black pants. When we looked at that policy, under our impression, my daughter identifies as female every day of her life. She dresses in feminine clothing every day of her life. LB's mom says school staff has always been supportive of her feminine attire. That was until Superintendent Mitchell King ordered the dress code be strictly enforced this year. He also said that, that the kids needed to have on their Sunday's best. How is that her wearing her dress not her Sunday's best. They took the issue to federal court, claiming discrimination by the school district, but the judge ruling against her because her registration paperwork spelled out male. Me going to graduation and, and what they asked me to wear would be me telling them that it's okay, and it's not. It would just feel like I was shadowed and tainted by bigotry, hate. So LB sat it out, telling us she felt humiliated by district officials. It's really emotional for me, you know, because this is an experience that we'll never be able to get back, okay. you know. Our comfort zone is a warm, fuzzy blanket, but I'll also be the first to advocate for pushing your limits. Meanwhile, at the ceremony Saturday night, some students were pulled right from the lineup just moments before receiving their diplomas. For Jay Dallas, the only thing standing in the way of her dream to walk the stage was the dress code. This is something that she, she achieved, you know, that she worked hard for. Her mom, Karen, says a supervisor told her daughter she could not wear black pants underneath her gown. She tells her that she could take her pants off and walk the stage, but she needed white shoes. So she could walk in her underwear, but she can't walk in pants. Her family members outraged that they weren't told during rehearsals. Several adults told her that her attire was okay, and they waited, and she's been here since 4 o'clock. Why didn't nobody say anything? Her sister, Renaya, graduated just three years ago, but tells us she's never seen anything like this. When I graduated, I was proud to come from Harrison Central, but I just don't know what this is today. That, that was a very awful experience to see my sister not be able to graduate from where I graduated from. I traveled 800 miles to come see her graduate. And that's Jay's grandmother. I don't understand how that this a moment this important could be taken away from a child that's worked 12 years to get here. We reached out to Superintendent King a day after graduation. He replied with these 11 words. In part, we followed the policy. Harrison Central High Principal Kelly Fuller did not attend the ceremony. District leaders tell us she was away for family obligations. My graduation um, is the start of a new life a better life. Jay's mother tells us she plans to be at her daughter's school first thing Monday morning. 
In search of answers, as for LB, she says she'll never stop fighting for what she feels is right. Yeah, so after watching a couple of those clips, right, and other stories that I've done today, I always tend to ask myself, where are the fathers, <laughs> right? Where are the actual grown men, okay? Uh, you notice that the common denominator in a lot of these stories is the lack of fathers, okay? It's really amazing, <laughs> right? That something so simple is a glaring issue in our society and, uh, you know, it seems to be what we're not talking about enough, okay? Because you don't see many stories like this where you have a father figure there, okay? Almost as if having a father, you can avoid these types of situations in the first place. But what we have here <clears throat> is a case of two students, uh, one who is trans, the other who I, I don't know is trans or not, but I'm assuming is a tomboy, okay? Because uh, when I first watched the video, I was confused about who exactly was the girl that was denied the opportunity to walk because they were wearing pants. I was like, these girls don't look like they're wearing pants, <laughs> right? But the girl was actually the tomboy looking dude, I guess, uh, in the middle of the frame who looked very, very, very upset. Now, there's a couple ways that you can look at this story, okay? Um, the first way, which I think is fair, okay, and people might disagree with this, but it's fair just based off the fact that we have a society based off rules and regulations. The school has a right to tell students, you know, based off their biological sex, this is how you can dress. Right. The school has a right to have a dress code. OK, they have a right to have a dress code for how students come to school every day and how they graduate. That's just what it is. OK, that's something that schools have always had is a dress code. And how we dress is a function of biology. Right. It's a function of biology. And unfortunately for these students, OK, uh, the school said, hey, if you're a boy, you have to dress like this. If you're a girl, you have to dress like this. This is not based off how you feel or how you think you feel. This is based off your biology, how you were born. And we have it this way for a reason. You may disagree with those reasons. You may disagree with those rules, but those are the rules. So clearly, uh, you wanting to, you know, dress up as who you are or whatever, or who you think you are, uh, you made a choice to say, hey, that's more important than me walking, right? That's more important than me going across the stage and getting that diploma. And that's fine. You're free to make that choice. But you weren't denied an opportunity to graduate. You could have graduated and walked across the stage. You just had to adhere to the rules like everybody else. And there was no discrimination based off a person being trans because, as I recall, in that second case, the student uh was a girl they identified as a girl even though they look like a tomboy which is probably why they want to wear pants but they were still a girl so that it wasn't a trans student okay now here's the thing there's another way that you can look at this that i think is also fair but it doesn't really supersede the first way that you look at it because again rules are rules which is that well these rules are dumb and they're unnecessary which honestly I'm sympathetic to that argument, right? Because I think that it is kind of weird to force girls to wear a dress, okay? There's some girls who just don't wear dresses. Girls can dress formally by wearing pants. Now, again, I'm not a dude where I'm like, you know, empowering women to go out and wear pants. I'm just like, I don't see the big deal, right? And using that same logic, when it comes to a trans girl aka a biological boy that wants to wear a dress i don't want to see it but at the same time i'm not necessarily sure what is the big deal about the student doing that right like i mean at the end of the day i mean if that's what they want to wear that's what they want to wear i mean technically that is formal wear and i guess you could say it's not formal wear for a boy but still you know i mean some parents are just raising their kids to be like this right i mean it, it's unfortunate but I'm not necessarily sure if I would have denied a student the opportunity to walk on stage to graduate because they did not adhere to the biological requirements for the dress code, even though they were dressing formally, right? And I'm surprised here because this situation, I think, actually should be in reverse. Like, if you're going to make an exception and not allow 
a boy to dress up as a girl, then you should do that every day in school, right? Where he's like, no, no, no. You can't come to school in a skirt as a boy. No way. We're not having that. Hey, I think I kind of agree with that, right? I, I agree with that. But I'm saying like, if you're going to enforce that, I don't think you enforce it at a graduation where they're going to be wearing the graduation gown anyways, okay? Like, so if a, a boy is wearing a, a skirt or a dress, most people are not even going to see it because it's it's under the gown or whatever, right? Like, if you're going to enforce this, I would enforce it every day in school, not necessarily at a graduation ceremony where you're denying these kids the ability to walk across the stage because, you know, they, they want to dress in, you know, weird ways, <laughs> right? Um, but as long as it's still formal, okay? Now, I'm not saying that the kids better dress however they want, right? But as long as it's still formal, you know, it, it is what it is in my opinion. I would have banned it in regular day school, okay? That's what I would have done. But again, I'm not the superintendent and I don't blame the superintendent for strictly enforcing the rules, right? If the school decides that, hey, we want to strictly enforce the rules, it is what it is, regardless of whether or not I actually agree with the rules. So unfortunately, uh, you know, in society, we have rules. We have things that, you know, you have to follow and go along with. And just because you don't want to go along with everybody else's reality doesn't mean that people have to go along with what you want. It is what it is. So, you know, again, clearly these students thought that the way they wanted to dress or whatever, their identities were more important than that moment. And this is what happened, right? This was the consequence. It's really that simple. I don't think there's any discrimination going on here, right? Based off somebody being trans or whatever. I think what's happened is that the superintendent wants the dress code uh, enforced strictly, right? It is what it is. You just got to follow those rules. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.